What's up guys, Jimo here again and today we're going to be mixing it up a bit and talking some color theory. We're going to be going over how to tint color and we're going to be covering concepts that aren't just specific to automotive paint but color principles in general. From arts and crafts time to getting granny's cake that perfect shade of understimulating beige. So grab a coffee, there's a lot to take in. So at the core of color theory, we have the seven colors of the rainbow, which are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And similar to sound, light is measured in wavelengths. So color is just a visible reflection of these wavelengths. And our eyes can perceive anything between 400 and 700 nanometers. So this is all wonderful, and I'm sure you're wondering what this has to do with tinting color. What this actually has to do with is how we perceive color. For instance, Outside light is going to be a little bit different than artificial light. An incandescent bulb is going to be operating on a longer wavelength and it's going to be highlighting more your reds and your oranges and not so much your blues and violets. So what's going to happen is your color is going to look a little more red than it really is. So artificial light only typically contains a portion of true daylight. If you want to know exactly what your color looks like, you need to view it under regular daylight. And when you're tinting, that can make life a lot easier. Now looking at our color wheel here, we have the primary colors of red, blue, and yellow. So when you mix them together, you get the secondary colors. So red and blue gives you purple, blue and yellow gives you green, and red and yellow give you orange. Now color has three dimensions that we can adjust. There is the hue, which is the color itself. There's the lightness darkness value. And there's another dimension known as chroma, which refers to the saturation or purity of the color. So basically that's the color measured on a grayscale. The first adjustment you're going to want to make, if necessary, is going to be to the lightness darkness of a color, which is also known as the value. And generally you can darken a color by adding black and lighten it by adding white, but that's not always the case. For instance, on a red, if you were to add black to it, you're going to get more of a brownish tone than what you're likely after. So you can follow this guide here, and it's also going to be available on my website. If you need to access any of these diagrams, just check the uh, description below for a link. So the next dimension of color that you would need to adjust is the hue, which is basically the color itself. And when dealing with automotive paints, you'll generally come across the terms redder, greener, yellower, or bluer um, when dealing with variants. And what they're referring to is the cast shift, which is the undertone or secondary color of the original color that you're working on. So color can only shift one direction or the other, so you're best to look at it and compare which way it needs to go. So if we have a green car, we would look at our color, look at the car, and decide which way does it have to go. So if it needs to go more yellow, then you simply just add yellow and it's going to bring it in that direction. So evaluate the color and decide which way it needs to go and make your adjustments from there. So the last dimension of color that we can adjust is the chroma or cleanliness, dirtiness of a color as it will appear on variance lists with automotive paint. And what's the, what that's referring to is the gray level or saturation richness of a color. So if you're looking at your color and determine that it needs to be a bit more gray, then you can generally add a bit of black or gray to dirty up the color. If you want it to brighten up and become more rich, you would add the dominant color. So if you're dealing with a yellow and you want it to be richer, then you add more of the dominant tinter in the yellow formula. So we are pretty well done with talking about solid color, so I'm going to stop this video here. In the next one, however, we're going to get more into metallic paint and some of the challenges specific to working with metallics. Now, as I said before, you can check out the website if you want to have uh, another look at any of these diagrams. And there's all kinds of other articles there that I hope are of some use to people out there. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click like and leave me a comment. Later.